Hello everyone, welcome to my Kiwami Legend Difficulty Walkthrough. This is the final part of Chapter 6 where we're fighting Shoda, and it is once again another terribly designed fight. And I didn't get as many bloopers this time compared to the other fights, but that's only because the attempt where I managed to actually get it, I had bloopers occur during that moment. Just moments that really demanded attention for being badly designed. And alongside that, I have bloopers at the end of this video that clearly show that the designs overall do not work in creating a very functional fight. It's just a comical, stupid, badly designed fight that really makes you wonder if the developers cared at this point. At this point, it really feels like the developers stopped caring about what they were actually putting into this game. And just because of that, it's just impacted the overall quality of this game. And Shoda is a pain in the ass because he doesn't flinch properly. He gets these moments where he gets hyper armor randomly. The room is way too small. There's so many moments where you'll accidentally clip on an enemy or on an object and the camera will get stuck and you'll get punished because of it. And then Date, your AI partner in this fight, he gets in the way a lot. I have a moment at the end of this video where Date is in a grab. He knocks an enemy down. I end up running into the enemy on accident in order to escape Shoda and he punishes me because of it. So it's clear that Shoda has every possible advantage in order to get the drop on you, yet he's still given hyper armor? Why does he need hyper armor when the room is as small as it is, there's so much to clip on, the enemies have the advantage over you, Shoda can attack through other enemies, and then your AI partner can interrupt whatever you're doing and, it, and can mess you up? Like, that, that right there is just enough designs to allow Shoda to get an advantage, but don't give him hyper armor and all this bullshit. If you're looking right now, I haven't taken a single hit so far. It looks like the fight's really well designed, but it's not. I'm going to take damage later on, and it's going to feel like it's not my fault. It's going to be the game's fault, because Shoda gets a cheap advantage over me, and he cheats. Because that's what he does. And he's just a scrawny guy with that pocket knife, and he gets all these advantages that belong to a very buff character like Shimano. And you know another problem I have with this fight? There's no telling when he chooses to prioritize you or when he chooses to prioritize Date. Like, look right now. He's attacking Date right now, but at any moment, even if he's so far away from me, he can prioritize me, and he'll get the drop on me while I'm busy attacking another enemy because he gets hyper armor and is, he's using a knife so I can't block it. It's just unfair. It's not unfair in the sense I'm whining that, oh, I can do much better. This is not fair. This is objectively not fair. It's bullshit. He's breaking the rules of the game. He's getting all these advantages, he just has the ability to just be a completely inconsistent AI and get the drop on you. Like, th there's no argument you can give as to why this should be acceptable. This is just a fault in the developer's decision making. This is not a functional game. This is a game that was rushed out the door, and it clearly shows. I've never played any game like this ever. There hasn't been a single game i played that has felt just as bad in its designs compared to Yakuza Kiwami. This game might look really cool, its combat might look very interesting, it might look very accessible, it might have a lot of these skills, it might have a lot of really cool things with the side activities and with the characters, but it's just a bad game overall, because its functional designs, its main foundations that actually allow the gameplay to exist, are just rotting structures, just waiting to give way, and the game doesn't even try to hide that at all, it does a poor job of hiding it, if this game was actually well designed, it would at least do a better job of hiding those bad designs on the harder difficulties, but no, the harder difficulties just make those rotting structures known. If a construction worker were to see such rotting structures, they would immediately do whatever they can to fix those structures. But no, you have the owner of the house who's like, Oh, no, th this is actually working as intended. I don't want to pay any extra money, this and that. I don't want to go through all this extra effort to actually get this house fixed. I don't care about the safety of my family. I don't care about the safety of myself. I don't care about the safety of anyone else. I just want to do whatever I'm doing right now because it's okay. Like, that, that's exactly how I would describe the developers of this game. They just got so lazy when designing this game that they're not willing to put the time and effort necessary to actually polish this game because this is the model that has worked for so many years and no one has complained about it because everyone's playing on easy difficulty. And it's just caused the gameplay to suffer overall. It's unacceptable. This is one of the worst developers I've ever seen. And of course, it is made by Sega. And we, we all know how Sega caused game series like Sonic to actually go into the shit. And then we, they also sponsored Alien Isolation, which was a very buggy game. And it was a fun game overall, but the bugs really brought down the quality of that game. Like, Sega is clearly showing that they, they do not understand how to make a functional game. And like I said before, this is not a problem with bugs or anything. It's a problem with intended design choices that clearly weren't properly playtested. 
for this encounter, why couldn't they make the room bigger? Why couldn't they just make it where you're by yourself? Why couldn't they put in less enemies? Why couldn't they just remove the hyper armor aspect with Shoda? Like, this guy can get hyper armor even when you're hitting his back! And the back is a guaranteed spot where the enemies don't have any chance of flinching unless you're dealing with a special enemy type like Shimano! But no, you're dealing with a scrawny kid who's wielding a pocket knife like some pussy and it's giving him all these advantages, like somehow the weapon is just giving him all this ability to actually be a better fighter than cure you. Are you fucking serious right now? Like, what, what? This is this is magic. This is fantasy. This is just comical at this point. This just reminds me why I hate a lot of RPG games that rely so heavily upon being a certain level to actually get a fight done. It's like, I'm a level 1 man, and I'm dealing with a level 100 insect, and that somehow makes logical sense that one single stomp from my boot is not enough to kill this insect. That's exactly how it works in the real world, guys. That is exactly why we have so much trouble killing bugs. Oh no, we don't. And apropos of this, this kid that we're fighting right now is somehow better than Kiryu in every aspect, even though he probably doesn't have any fighting experience to the same degree as Kiryu. And yet, he's getting demolished by this one scrawny kid. Does that make any sense, guys? And it's all because he has all these properties that only exist if the world of Yakuza was a game. We can't have any logical mechanics, can we? We have to give all these enemies these advantages they don't need because it just impacts the overall flow of the gameplay and just allows us to make a supposedly difficult game when in actuality it's just a broken piece of shit. And that's the end of the fight right there. And now for some bloopers, and this is the kind of shit you deal with in a small area with so many enemies and you get still knocked to death massively. And then same thing happens again where I'm just gonna mash the buttons like crazy because there's nothing I can do against this guy and he punishes me very easily. Uh, same thing again, look at it. And we have this right here, well look, Shoda is prioritizing me now instead of Date. There's no telling when he chooses to switch. And then this clip, Shoda attacks me through another enemy. If this is how the design is going to be, why not make it where the enemies can attack each other? That would make a lot more sense. And then this right here, Date blocks my path. He knocked an enemy down to the ground, and I got punished. Bullshit! Your AI partner gets you screwed so much in this entire fight. Like, there, the designs put in place just don't make any sense, and as I demonstrated with the friendly fire example that is completely non-existent in this game, why the hell would they put you in a room that is so tiny, with so many enemies, yet not put in a whole system that balances that out, not give any kind of compensation for that, where, say for instance, the enemies can attack each other, and then this forces the developers to actually intelligently design their enemies, so that they are actually skillful with how they choose to attack you, and they're making sure not to hit their own friends. They could easily do something like that, but no, they just settled with a bare-bones design that is clearly befitting of that of a child's mindset. This this feels like an alpha right now. This feels like the game was an alpha development, and they just thought, we'll release the alpha, we'll not release the beta, we'll just release this as the final version of the game, because we want to cash in on the rewards, we want to cash in on the success of this franchise, because we know how to take advantage of gullible fans. This is just a terrible practice, and it doesn't help that these gullible fans blow smoke up the developers' asses to allow them to continue maintaining these designs and mentalities that go against the very nature of beat-em-up games. This game feels dead with these designs, and that also applies to the other Yakuza games as well. And having said that, I mean, I know my friend loves Yakuza 2 a lot, so I just want to apologize to him, but that's just how I feel about this game series. It feels dead because of these poor designs and poor mentalities. So, I'm just gonna stop right there. This is the end of chapter 6, finally. Stay tuned for the next couple of chapters. Thank you all for watching, and you take care now.